Hello, everybody. This is Vince Russo. It is very late uh, on the East Coast, especially where my buddy Vito LaGrasso is. It's about 1215. WrestleMania just ended. It's only 1015 here in Colorado, so I'm getting off the hook. But Vito's here with me 1215 at night. We just wa- I-, I watched five hours of WrestleMania. Uh, bro, I watched. I did it on Twitch. I commentated for five hours. I'm freaking exhausted, bro. I I may fall asleep during this show. Vito, uh, I know you watched it as well. Bro, you didn't watch any of that pre-show stuff, did you? No, I did not. Today was a good day for the Big Vito brand. I had all the members of my brand post something for us to put on the YouTube channel for the Big Vito brand which I thought was great, or everybody participated. And then I did my own uh, my own little broadcast, and we did a little something before the before WrestleMania started at 7. Uh, I didn't watch any of the pre-show. I was out at the gym. I was doing my, my you know, usual. I'll get my wife pizza, and the guys make a fresh pie, cut her two slices. So, I mean, she's good with that. And then, you know, I just sat and watched and prepared myself, took in the whole night, and I'm ready to discuss it with Vince Russo. And uh, Vince, would you like to start off backwards for WrestleMania tonight? You want to start the main event and go the other way? Let's start the main event and go the other way, because everybody's fresh off that. And that was the most anticipated match of the night. Okay, let okay before we do that, let's do that, but let's have some general overviews. Okay, okay, bro. Bro, I don't know for the life of me why this has to be so long. I bro, I don't know what they charge for ticket prices, and maybe you know it's 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 their way of um you know, justifying ticket prices. I don't know, bro. The length of the time clearly hurt the show you, bro after the daniel bryan it was like that was that was the the one last um uh you know gasp you know, gasp energy that the crowd had they let all that out when daniel bryan went over and bro after the daniel bryan match i mean the, the crowd just died i it hurt the show I don't know, Vito, why the show has to be this long. Especially the beginning matches. I'm not taking away anybody from the matches because some, you know, there were a couple matches that I did enjoy in the beginning of the show. And, you know, I know WrestleMania is the big extravaganza and everybody wants to get their money's worth and they all want to sit and they want to enjoy. But people get tired from sitting in the seats and watching wrestling just like anything else. And if the matches are not interesting and they're not good, well, guess what? Everybody's going to be bored and getting popcorn. So, I mean, that's the name of that tune. But, Vito, even if the matches are good, I cannot see people enjoying it for seven freaking hours, bro. I, nah. I don't care. I don't care how good it is. It's seven hours, bro. You, you, you're not going to keep people for seven hours, bro. I don't care what, bro. If Rihanna gave a seven-hour concert naked, okay, bro, buck naked, she wouldn't keep me there for seven hours, bro. Do you remember now? What people don't realize is that uh, I used to do, and Vince used to be part of it when they used to do the double tapings. Back in the early 90s, 91, 92, 93, and it used to be five or six hours, people. And you thought that was a long day. Imagine doing that. I mean, that's something. And we both experienced that. And I could tell you, it's not fun being in the back. Too much. Too, too, too much. I would love to hear the explanation from somebody because I really don't understand. I'm not burying them. I just don't know why this had to be seven hours. Bro, I I clearly hit a point on Twitch um, where I was doing the show live, Vince Russo live on Twitch. I I hit a wall. I mean, I clearly hit a wall where I was like, bro, I'm like, I'm 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 just about to tap out of this thing. And it was really after Daniel Bryan and the Shane McMahon match. But Vito, you want to start at the end. You said a lot of interesting things to me before the show started. Give me your breakdown of Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. 
All right, people. Let's talk. Let's tell. Let's really talk about this. And oh, Vince is tired. Now, this was the most anticipated match on the card. In the main event: Brock Lesnar going to UFC after this match. His last match as in the WWE. Everybody talked about it. Reigns is going to be the next big dog and next heavyweight champ. All the full time and part time bullshit and all that kind of guys. Guys, I am calling this as I see it. And Brock did not want to put over Reigns, and Reigns was not going to kick out on one F five. This went on a couple times. You, I, I called it, and I'm sitting in my living room. I said Brock is going to take off his gloves and he's going to bust them open. Brock is going to do this. But after the second or third F five and all the suplexes, when he kicked out, Heyman even started talking to Reigns. And you already knew what was calling, and I said it. He's taking off the gloves. He's going to give him the Randy Orton treatment. And sure enough, he busted him open hard way. That's not wrestling. That's not program people. That's not what the sport is about, okay? It's a business at the end of the day. Brock was not putting over reins. Brock is going to UFC. And I'm telling you, it bro, was- Bro, can I, can, I, can I give you a timeout right there, V? Go ahead. You're one of the boys, bro. Yeah. You're you're about as tough as they come. Right. Okay. Say this went on, bro, during the day where Brock didn't want to put Reigns over. And again, bro, we kind of saw this. Remember where they changed the main event? Uh, Ginger Mahal. Remember Ginger? Yeah. All of a sudden, because again, and I said, bro, they didn't want it. They, 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 you know, Heyman buried him in a promo. Remember mm -hmm. all that. Okay, bro. Say this took place, Vito. Okay. Now. Say, you know, during the day, say Lesnar didn't want to put him over and say Reigns was hot about it. So say Reigns kept kicking out of these F5s, F5, F5. Bro, here, here's Vito where I'm going to challenge what you said a little bit. If, if, if Lesnar takes off the gloves and opens up Reigns the hard way, bro, I think Roman Reigns is a pretty tough SOB, bro. And I, I I can't imagine a Brock Lesnar doing that to him and then him doing the job. I, I can't imagine that, bro. I, I can't imagine Lesnar takes off the gloves, opens them up the hard way, and freaking Reigns screw the script. I can't believe the guy doesn't go ballistic. But you got to remember something. It's a it's a business. It's a doggy dog business. And you know what? The guy doesn't want to do the job, and it's the last match. He could do what he wants. He could walk off and say, "Okay, f everybody, I'm leaving. I'm taking my title, Paul. Let's go. We'll go ride into the sunset." There's nothing anybody could do about it. What they're going to do? Suspend him? What they're going to do? Fine him? What they're going to do? Cut his uh, payout at WrestleMania? All right. So you don't bust people open. The hard way. It's just not scripted. You don't do it. This was the. This is what the discussion was today. Reigns was supposed to go over. Brock didn't want to do the job because I don't think Brock really cares for Roman, and Roman doesn't care for Brock. And no matter what the promos are, Brock is known to not like people. A lot of people. He's got a very very small circle of people who he keeps close to him. And I, I could tell that the match went away, and you could tell. After a while, it was one-sided and something was up. As soon as I seen the gloves come off, this is what happened. And it's not about getting up and fighting because then the whole thing will go, you know, go crazy. You're in there with Brock Lesnar. He is a UFC fighter. He is a tough guy. He knows how to handle himself. I'm sure Roman Reigns is a tough guy also, but I don't think he's at the caliber of fighter. Not taking anything away from him, but I don't think he's at the caliber of fighter of a Brock Lesnar. I know he can handle himself, but when business goes funny like that and you see that happen, okay, you don't want to do this. You're going to freaking kick out of my finish. Okay, now I'm going to give you a receipt, and that's exactly what it was. I, I don't care what you say because in all the years I'm wrestling, all the years you've been writing, Vince, you have never written something like that in a script. Nobody does that. I've been around the biggest the baddest the toughest guys in the business and nobody freaking opens up somebody like that the hard way it's not done that's not professional that's not professional wrestling well, that's not what we grew up on that's not what we lived Vito, you know what else is now professional wrestling i'm watching this bro and and this is where you are an expert bro i'm watching this and i'm saying to myself bro i don't care how big and bad 
Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns are. Bro, the human body is not built for that. The, the human body, bro, is not built for that kind of physical punishment, bro. Bro, these guys literally, you got two big guys. This is a work, bro. This is a freaking work. I swear to God. Bro, do you know how close Lesnar could have came to breaking Reigns' neck on the concrete with that freaking suplex? No, I know. I, I, bro, the, the, I don't, I don't, the, I don't, body, this is a work. This is a work, bro. Human bodies, I don't care how big you are, they're not made for that. And I, I don't I don't know how things got to this freaking level where I'm telling, bro, here's the end game, Vito. Mark my words on it. I've been saying this for two years now. Somebody's going to wind up a paraplegic. Then we're going to stop and look at the way we work. And it's going to take that to happen. My God, bro, these guys practically killed each other. That thing on the outside, Reigns tucked his head at the last second, bro. He came so close to going head first on that concrete. No, he did. But you know what it is, Vince? Guys are not taught to work like they were back in the day when I broke into business and guys before that where they teach you to work safe. Now, before anybody says, well – you know, working safe and you have concussions and you have this and that. Guys, you're, you're working safe to protect the body. There's not much you, protection you can give your head, but protecting the body, we're talking about the body here. When you work safely and you place people down and you make sure they land on their back and you turn them over onto their back in a slam, you suplex them and you bend and you make sure it's a flat bump and you take care of the guy not to hurt with him because you do have to work with him the next night. In some cases, you know, like in a lot of things we see today, you know, you look at Seth Rollins. He went on that that streak where he was hurting guys, right? And everybody was up in arms. You know, Samoa Joe, he hurt guys. You know what I'm saying? When they came up. And that's not because maybe they, you know, weren't as careful, but they make mistakes or they weren't as safe. And people have seen this. You look at Daniel Bryan, okay? He came back from concussions. He had, the, he got cleared. You know what I'm saying? All it takes is one blow to the head. And then he's back on the on that DL list, and he's back where he started from, or worse. You know, guys, it's not the same practice as it was 20 years ago, and it's not the same teaching as 20 years ago. It's more of this strong style, shoot style. Everything has got to look real. Doesn't mean it has to feel real. You could work snug, but you could work safe. And a lot of stuff we saw tonight, some of the stuff wasn't safe, and now that's your beef. Now, Vito, if this went down the way that you say it went down, does Roman not go in the back and? I'm not there. You're not there. I'm not Roman Reigns. But if I'm Vito Lagrasso and somebody did that to me, I am picking up a bat and I'm going to crack your head open. Mm. That ends that question. And it doesn't matter. And I've been, you know, and this is no disrespect to anybody out there. I'm just a different breed of guy. But if you go mano a mano in the ring and you want to shoot and you want to say how tough you are, hey, it wasn't it wasn't hardly anybody around and say, hey, I want to shoot the Vito Lagrasso or I want to test my will. And if you did test your will, I outwilled you, I out toughed you, and what and that was it. Okay, but when you go into that kind of extreme, guys, you know that's not what the business is about. That's not how how it's supposed to be. And if somebody purposely opens you up or purposely does it, and he does it with like an attempt to harm you, you have every right to defend yourself, whether it be in the ring or you wait to get in the back. And then it's all hands on deck because there's nobody who's going to stop me, pull me away, do whatever. And that goes for everybody out there. Guys, protect yourself. You don't have to take this kind of crap in the ring. You don't have to do This is big time business. This is the side of wrestling that people don't teach you. This is how you, this is what you learn after you learn how to wrestle and then you learn the business. How about learning everything in correlation, learn the business, learn what's going on, learn how to wrestle safe, do everything the right way, and then move up the ranks. Everybody who's a wrestler, who's an indie wrestler, and they all do this and it drives me nuts. First match, they already have, they already have merch and nobody knows who the hell they are. 
and they don't know how to work. So why are you buying merch? Yeah. Bro, remember I almost took you out with the baseball bat with the uh, match against Cousin Luke? Remember that, bro? Yes, I do remember that. Okay. All right, let's go to the next match. We're working the back up. Nicholas and Braun Strowman and now the tag champs. That made a mockery of the sport of professional wrestling. I don't care what you say. <clears throat> that is a show of disrespect to every guy in the back who put their time in during the year to give somebody some shine, to give somebody a chance, to give somebody a moment at WrestleMania who worked their ass off all year long, and you go and pick a little kid in the state of Louisiana that has a state athletic commission that says you have to be licensed and sanctioned by the state of Louisiana. You have to be 16 or 18 years old to participate in a wrestling match or to train. You, anybody who is not a wrestler cannot be within eight feet of the ring. Tonight, they broke the law of the blood. They broke the law of uh, the kid. They broke the law of uh, a non-trained athlete being near the ring and this child. God forbid somebody slipped and the boot would have went to this kid's face or somebody fell backwards and back smacked this kid off the mat. What would have happened during that match? Mm. Vince, what would you what would you do if you were a fan watching that? Ah, uh, bro, I don't know. There's just so many things like listen, bro, I, I've done some crazy things in my day. Yes. Um, you know, so I'm I'm not gonna sit here and ridicule that and rip that to shreds. Here's what I'm gonna say though, bro, is here's what I don't understand. This is WrestleMania. You could have put so many guys in that spot and it would have been huge. I, I mean, it would have been huge. I mean, to me, it was like, you know, you know, you, you know, you, you know, you have take a show up and you got Ronda Rousey and you do Daniel Bryan. I mean, that was a perfect opportunity and a perfect spot to, you know, have do really something memorable again. I mean, bro, there was a part of me. I mean, there was really a part of me that thought, oh my God, bro, this way they're going to bring Hogan back. You know, because Braun could have done all the heavy lifting. He could have gave Hogan the hot tag, you know, and then figure out what, where they go with the tag team titles later. You know what I'm right. saying? But I was, really, right. I, was, I was really convinced. This, this, that, that's my whole thing, bro. Okay, the kid and this and that. Like, I'm not even going to get into that because, you know, uh, they're going to tell me, oh, yeah, Vince, but, you know, David Arquette. I'm not even going to open that Pandora's box. I just yeah, but you've been vindicated on Twitter. Yeah, well, they said I, it on Twitter. I just Dave, you you've been vindicated. I just don't understand why would you waste that spot? That's what I don't understand. It was sad, and you know what? This is not to kill the WWE. They did do some good stuff tonight. Not everything was bad, people. They did do some good stuff, which is questioning the the, the integrity and the and the uh, magnitude of some of the matches. And we're not burying nobody here. And I'm by no means am I burying it because I'm prepared to say some great things about tonight's show. And you know what, people? We're starting from the back up because the Brock Lesnar uh, uh, Roman Reigns match was the prominent match. And the way it ended and the way things happened, you have to talk about that first because that's going to be a hot topic going from here on. And we're well, going to talk about this for well, next couple of weeks. Well, bro, especially it's going to be a hot topic because here's what I really want to know, Vito. If everything you're saying is true, and bro, you know this stuff better than I. I'm, I'm a freaking writer. I didn't get in, in. I didn't. I didn't hop into the business of the locker room like this. But I mean, he, you know, bro. Like, remember last time with Orton, and yeah. remember, and remember Jericho was there, bro. Yeah. And Jericho had a big problem with 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 Brock Lesnar. All that was documented. Here's what I'm having the trouble with, bro. If now this is the second time that he's done this, what what does Vince McMahon have his head up his ass, bro? What what, what, what does Vince McMahon do? Nothing. But Vince, it's supposedly his last match. His contract's up, so he could do what he wants. He's gonna ride into the sunset. I, even though Brock is the longest reigning heavyweight champion they've had in 30 years, even though Brock Lesnar is the biggest draw, even though he wrestles part-time, even though he's not susceptible and he has privileges, he's the money man. He's what draws the house. 
if they didn't need him, he wouldn't be there. If yeah. everybody on the card would do their job like and the capacity of a Brock Lesnar, there wouldn't be no need for part timers. But the business needs the part timers because the guys who are working full time don't have the it factor that Vince McMahon wants for the company to draw money and make money for the product. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Bro, the yeah, let's talk about Nakamura and AJ. I, I think this was a big, big disappointment. Now, the, the entrance was awesome. Somebody told me that that was Alex Cooper's lead guitarist and the woman's name was Nita Strauss. I thought that was awesome. I, I think she should permanently be a part of his act on that guitar. I thought that was awesome. But, bro, like these guys have wrestled before. They've wrestled before in Japan. They've known each other. They knew this match was going to happen for a long time. Now, granted, bro, the, the crowd was dead at this point. The crowd was absolutely dead at this point. The crowd would were dead after, after Daniel Bryant. That was it. So they were absolutely dead. But with that aside, I mean, bro, I don't think this was the five-star match everybody was looking for. It wasn't the five-star match because this was a Japanese-style match. It was a match that they did in Japan. This was a match that wasn't WWE-style, okay? And I have to tell you, I was totally disappointed. I was looking forward to seeing some high-flying stuff, some hard-hitting stuff. When I seen them go into a hold and I saw them sitting there, I'm saying no way they are doing this. No way. Now, the Nakamura heel turn? Yes, that was great. It was long time coming because he has been an abs absolute disappointment as a babyface. He's not a babyface. All wrestlers who are foreigners in this country should be heels because that's the most natural heat that you're going to get, and it's easy to that's dislike racist. them. That's racist. I'm going to go after your sponsors for saying that. I'm not I'm not trying to do that, but you know what? I'm Please just speaking. Give me, tell me your sponsors. Who are they? I'm going after them. Who are the Who t Who, who's the t-shirt company? Uh, uh, elbow, collar and elbow? Collar and elbow. Let me write them down. Collar and elbow. Go call them tomorrow. Okay. Um, Vito. Go ahead. These guys have known about this match for a long time. Right. I'm I'm you know, I'm sure they've talked about this match for a long time. Yes. Was this the match they talked about, bro? Were they so off kilter with the crowd? Was this the match they talked about, or did something just go awry during the match? I think that it just was a match that they've done that in J in Japan, that style match is over. Over here at the WWE, this style match was not over. I I have come to like AJ Styles' work. I have come to see Nakamura not be, you know, more, his style is more Japan oriented. Putting them two together in a highly anticipated match and it come out a dud. They had a couple of flashes, but nothing like it was supposed to be hyped. You yeah. know, yeah. I just think it's, a, that was the biggest disappointment of the night. I yeah, think I, I agree with that, but I also, you know, again, I think the crowd was dead by then. I just want to say that. I mean, the crowd, bro, at that point, the crowd's six hours in, bro. But I have to admit, I have to give you one point that you did make from the beginning when we talked, when we started this. If they had a shorter amount of time, the match would have been 10 times better. Yeah, bro, th bro, Vito, could they have not easily cut 90 minutes out of this show? Like, are you kidding me, bro? Easily yeah. they could have cut 90 minutes out of this show. Definitely. Definitely. What do you think about Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss? Uh, the crowd was dead. It yeah. was dead. Yeah. And I have to say something. I was – Nia Jax is not a 10, 15, or 20-minute wrestler. No. She is a 5 to 8-minute wrestler. Yeah, like Awesome, she remember, like has, awesome Kong. I remember how we used to book Awesome Kong at TNA. That's how you book Awesome Kong because when, when a woman's that big – as a shoot and as a work, they would run out of steam quickly. I mean, and, and that's how you got to book it, bro. But go ahead, Vito. But I don't think Nia Jack has the arsenal, the yeah. offensive arsenal, to be in a long extended match. How many clotheslines did she throw tonight? How many hair pull throws did she throw tonight? How many beals did she have? 
How many suplexes did she do? She had a very limited awesome. I think she can be, if booked right, a very dominant champion. Now, I said this before this match, and I said it, and I said, I hope it's a seven-second squash, and it's done, and she squashes her like an ant, like she said, and that would I would have been fine with that. To have this length of a match, I just think it took away – from what it could have been a greater achievement for Nia Jack, who does re represent um, bullying, who does represent overweight people, who do does represent people who have some problems. And I give all the credit to that young lady because she went out there, she overcame everything. And I think for her, congratulations are due because she worked hard, she does hard. I hope the WWE books her in shorter matches where she's dominant, she doesn't overexpose herself, and she goes from here and have a long title reign because there isn't anybody really in that division who should beat her for at least five or six months. Okay, what about the tag match? Shane and Daniel Bryan and uh, Sami Zayn and uh, Kevin Owens. All right. The comeback of Daniel Bryan anticipated the crowd up, the attack of Owens and Zayn to begin the match – I thought it was kind of lame that they had Daniel Bryan lay out there, you know, laid out with the ambulance and the paramedics and all that stuff. And they had Shane doing the match. Now, Shane O'Mac, uh, I believe he got sick a few weeks ago. He had some kind of intestinal problem. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. You know, he came back. You could see he wasn't in the WrestleMania shape that he usually is in. He still does the top rope, the top rope jump better than anybody I've ever seen. Him and RVD, you know, one, two in that spot. You know, I thought the match, they got a lot of good steam. Daniel Bryan coming back. You could tell Daniel Bryan was offbeat and wasn't in practice, you know, and it wasn't as crisp as he wanted, but he did come back. He did a good job for what time he missed in the business. Congratulations for him on his return. I think he did a fine job. Shane O'Mac as always. Now the question is, do Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens go to Raw and looking for jobs? Or do they take them back on SmackDown? That's the question after the match. Maybe they go back to NXT, bro. I would like to see them go back to NXT because I think that would pop the NXT crowd. And I think that would be great for business. Vito, here's the thing I, I looked with. I was watching this match very closely because I, I, I don't want Daniel Bryan to get hurt. I like the way they protected him by having him lay on the outside for a good portion of the match. But, bro, I don't like how they did it, bro. They gave him that freaking spot on the apron again. And yep. I'm like, okay, bro, like, look, look at what you guys are doing. You're trying to protect them, which is a good thing. So we're going to let them lay, you know, bring the paramedics down there and everything else. Let Shane, Shane, Shane McMahon take the match. But that's, that's what you, that's the move. Like, that's the move. You could not have done something safer. And, bro, everybody right away on Twitch was telling me, bro, he didn't hit his head. He didn't hit his head. He didn't. Vito, can you explain to them that quick, jarring, uh, you know, motions of the head and the neck could be just as important as hitting your head? Guys, when you take a bump of that magnitude, guys, it's the whiplash effect, just right. like you're getting in a car accident. So your head just snaps back and goes back. Sometimes you don't need to hit your head to have a concussion or or get any kind of whiplash. I'm not a doctor. I'm not. I'm not a uh, an a somebody who could tell you medically. I could tell you from somebody who has taken bumps, has been in the wrestling business. When your head and body hit. Your head snaps back no matter what you're doing. Your head just doesn't stay straight and is not – your head moves like a pinata. So the uh, the speed of the bump, the height of the bump, the awkwardness of the bump, the height of the bump, everything is a whiplash effect from your knees to your midsection to your neck to your head. Everything, ta everything moves. Yeah. So you take one wrong move on something like that, What's to say you can't uh, sprain your neck or get a stinger through your whole body? Then what do you do?
Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. And and I mean, and then when he came in, bro, he was pretty much on the offensive where he was right. in control uh, on the offensive. Very little defense there, bro. So they did a good job with all that. They um, did. You know, the people were into it. I mean, all that worked out really, really great. But man, just that one spot, like, hey, they, um, bro, let's go to um. Let's go to uh, Cena and The Undertaker. And let's go all the way back to Elias, bro. Okay. Seeing what they did with this Nicholas kid, you you mean to tell me they had Strowman and Elias working that angle? You mean to tell me, bro, creatively, they couldn't have come out of that with Strowman and Elias being partners? Because you look at what the both of them did tonight, and it was a total waste of both those talents. It was a waste of Braun Strowman to bring the little kid in. It was a, a waste on Elias for, for Cena to kick his ass. I cannot – they were right there, bro. They had a program between Strowman and Elias. I cannot believe how creatively they didn't, they didn't tie that together and make something work there – for them to be tag partners at WrestleMania based on what they both did tonight. You're absolutely 100% right. Having Strowman come out, I mean, and with the kid, you know, like I said earlier, they could have gave that spot to a lot of guys. Being that um, that he had had a program with Elias and should have been booked together, could have been booked together. I could think of another guy who was back there who they could have gave us who they could have gave a spot to and elevated. There's a guy there, Vince, who was on last week, who was asking uh, Braun for a run or a spot to be a tag partner. It's the guy who hasn't won a match in his comeback. I can't think of his name. Uh, I know who you're talking about. I know. Right. Who, yeah. Now, if Braun would have brought this guy out, somebody out there will remember his name. And he got his first win as tag team champion. That gives that guy a rub. That gives that guy some credibility. They make something of this guy. And, okay, a story is is told. You know, Elias, he is a waste going nowhere, and he's a quality talent. Braun Strowman, now that he has the tag team titles and he knows that he cannot defend it with the child. Why not? I say they defend the titles against the Bludgeon Brothers. Oh, God. Anyway, Vince, you're you're vindicated. Just leave the booking alone tonight. Leave Bro, the booking there were alone. People on Twitter, they were wanted people on Twitter that wanted Cesaro to hit Nicholas with the uppercut. Bro, ah, uh, that's terrible. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what people are thinking. But anyway, you know, I just think that uh, there could have been a better choice. You know, and you know what? It is kind of a disrespect and a slap in the face to Cesaro and Sheamus. Yeah. Because those guys work. They yeah. put their night in, night out. They're working 150%. They give their all. And for them to lose in a gimmick match with all that hope. And what was the what was all those characters doing on their entrance? You mean to tell me decorated tag team champions come out like this? Yeah. That was I, horrible. I would love to know whose idea that was with the kid. I would love to know. Whoever booked that in, in, the, uh, in the office... You hit a home run with that one because that sucked. Bro, what'd you think about Taker and Cena? The long-awaited return of The Undertaker. Okay? Now, everybody was waiting for it. Everybody wanted it. Having Cena sit in the crowd with the fans, hoping and praying that he shows up getting the thing. I think that The Undertaker coming back tonight was a great success because Cena put him over without a fuss. And that's how you do business in the WWE. That's how you do business wrestling 101. One star to the other star. Where the one star has been down, he's been putting guys over. There's another star who's still wrestling, doing giving somebody the favor out of respect. Cena did the right thing tonight. Nobody could say anything bad about Cena. And it was good. It was short. The Undertaker did his thing. Everybody got a rise out of it. And that was probably 
the happiest moment of the program tonight when seeing the Undertaker because every he's a fan favorite. He could do this thing for until he's 60 as long as he has a short match and he does it with somebody who could put him over correctly. Yeah, and 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 bro, that that speaks droves about John Cena, bro. It, 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 I I said the exact same thing you said, Vito. He came, he did business, and that's why John Cena is a freaking pro. Do we need to talk about New Day, Usos, and Bludgeon Brothers? Yeah, I walked away from that match. Yeah, me too. I, I went to the bathroom. I didn't see it. All right, Vito, tell me about Ronda Rousey and Stephanie and. Uh, uh, Kurt and Triple H. I think the whole program that they did was a success. And they brought it out and they did it the right way. I think that the match was excellent. I think Triple H and Stephanie did an awesome job on guiding Ronda, Ronda Rousey tonight. Kurt Angle as a tag team partner did a good job in there. It was a fantastic match from start to finish. There was no lulls. You gave that suspense when when um, when Triple H and Ronda Rousey were going to square off and they were going to throw hands and R Ronda went to town. I thought Stephanie played the coward heel to perfection, taking every little cheap shot that she could get at Ronda. But in the end, she put over Ronda. And you know what? The whole match was just a, a thing of greatness. I commend everybody in that match for the work they put in tonight. Excellent job, Stephanie, Triple H, Kurt Angle, and Ronda Rousey. Congratulations. I hope that all your matches could be that easy. But remember, when you start out at the top, there's only one way to go, and that's down. And not every match for Ronda Rousey is going to be that good. So, people, if you have expectations that high, give the girl a break. She came in at WrestleMania. She's new. She's learning. She will get better. She will improve. And I would say that she will be in the upper echelon of top women wrestlers, professional wrestlers, in a very short time. Yes. Well, you know, I, I think they did an excellent job. I, I thought this was much, much, much better than I could have imagined. I think it was probably better than they imagined. I think they did an excellent job. I, I think all four players did an excellent job, bro. The only thing I wish they would have done differently is – if she would have freaking tapped Triple H, that the roof would have blown off that place. Yeah, yeah definitely. Oh, uh, bro, that 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 should have been a finish. That was the finish right there, bro. She should have tapped Triple H. That that they would have blew the doors. But that's the problem, bro. They don't. They wouldn't know how to book after that. So you know, in their minds, oh my God, Triple H is dead. If Ronda Rousey taps him, whatever the case may be, because they don't know how to write themselves out of that, bro. That place would have blown. Yeah, if but you she know what, Vince? You know what, Vince? I gotta say that even though I know that would have been the correct finish, right? Still tapping out Stephanie after the way she handled herself during the match and the slaps and the cheap shots. That's the one they wanted to pin. The one that would have really blown the roof off the whole everything and been on every news sheet and everything was the Triple H tapping because then you could have ran into a bunch of things. But I don't think Stephanie and Triple H are into any long programs. I think they only come out for special events because they are CEOs. I think they handle themselves as, you know, um, employers and office people. And when they need to come in and do the job, they do it very well. I commend them for that because on the business side, they do handle themselves, you know, at a good level and at a good pace. So, <clears throat> like I said, you know, there could have been a lot of coulda, woulda, shouldas. You know, you, you make a good point. But Stephanie tapping out, and I always said, Stephanie is a good wrestler. Shane is a good wrestler. It's in their blood. They don't have to do it 24 hours a day. They're naturals. Stephanie is a natural. If she wanted to come out and say, I want to be a full-time wrestler, Stephanie could be champ and be a legit champ for a, a year without nobody saying, oh, that she's the boss or she's the boss's daughter. She could wrestle if she wants to, just like Shane could have wrestled full-time if he wanted to. They're naturals. Yeah. And that's a gift.
Yeah. No, they did a great job. Bro, before we finish this up, I want to tell everybody about VinylMePlease.com. The sponsor of this show, bro, if you're into vinyl and albums like I am, you want to go to VinylMePlease.com. This is the one-stop vinyl source online. They have a subscription that you could join for $29 a month, $27 a month for three months, $25 a month for a year. That gets you their album of the month, which includes shipping. If you don't like their selection of album of the month, there are a hundred other albums you can choose from. And these albums are well worth the price. 180 grams. They're very heavy. They're very durable. They're not going to scratch. They're not going to get messed up. Beautiful original artwork, cocktail recipes that go hand in hand with the album. Um, also, they have a store. You don't have to subscribe to the club to use the store. You can go into the store. You could buy individual albums. They rotate the inventory every month. But man, if you're a vinyl guy like I am, if you're into albums and records, this is the place to go. All genres, bro. New music, reissues, blues, country, metal, rock, you name it, bro. It's all here at VinylMePlease.com. Check them out. All right, uh, Vito, next up we had the uh, four-way. I'm going to say this. The great guy won tonight in Jinder Mahal, your boy. And that's the guy who should have won a long time ago. Yeah. I'm glad they put the strap on him. Bobby Roode is so vanilla, and I can't stand I, – I know he's your I know he's your buddy, and I know he's your friend. He just comes out as so vanilla, and I just, you know, I'm sorry I can't watch him. I think what they're doing with Rusev is a crime. Somebody should be arrested for misuse of talent because that guy is a legit beast. I've been saying it. I say it all along. And this comes before Rusev Day, guys. I was a fan of his. When he came out as the Russian beast, you know, and came out as a heel with Lana, I think he's a great, great heel. They made him a baby face. And he's a good baby face. I think he is the most wasted talent on both rosters. I'm glad Randy Orton was champion coming in, and I'm glad he's not champion going out so they could do something else with Randy. They put the title on him for the draw to make the match interesting because Bobby Roode just doesn't have the it factor. Jinder Mahal, after a run as champion, deserves to get another championship run. I hope they do something good with him. I doubt if you'll ever see him as a babyface, but for him to be a good heel with a title, this opens up a whole brand new bunch of stuff for him. Congratulations to Jinder Mahal on his title win. They should have never took the belt belt off Ginger Mahal in the first place. And, and look where it wound up. Between AJ and Nakamura, that belt did not need to be a part of that match. Nope. It did not. If if Ginger still would have had the belt after all this time, they should have never took the belt off of him. I don't know what happened in the locker room. I don't know the politics of it, but it was a waste to put it on AJ, especially, you know, with what we saw at WrestleMania tonight, that Matt, that that title did not need to be on the line. Uh, Oscar and Charlotte. I'm going to say this: those two ladies probably had match of the night. That was a great match. That was the right finish. Oscar needed to lose to the best in the business in the women's division. She lost to Charlotte Flair, and a great show of emotion at the end of the match. I commend both ladies because. That with the Triple H, Rousey, Stephanie, Kurt Angle match, those are the matches of the night, the best matches of the night with those two matches. Charlotte Flair, another great performance. Oscar, and that, and that is the best Oscar has looked. And you only look as good as your opponent. And when you wrestle with Charlotte Flair, you're going to have a good match. Oscar had the best match of her career tonight. Congratulations to both those young ladies because they put out a great effort, and I thoroughly enjoyed the match. I thought this was a great match. Uh, I was a little, uh, a lot surprised by the finish because Glenn Disco thought they were going to work towards an undefeated Oscar and Ronda Rousey. 
that's a big match, bro. That's a big payday. So I was kind of surprised with the finish. However, I love the fact this certified Charlotte. And Charlotte should be certified. She is a superstar, bro, through and through. You know, a throwback to the old days. She carries herself with class, dignity. She looks the part. Everything about her is money, 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 money. This 100% certified her tonight, and I was very happy about that. Well, the one thing, too, you know, I will bring up, Carmella did not cash in her money in the bank, if anybody noticed, and she was one of the first participants out. I know you didn't watch the pre-show of the Women's Battle Royal, Vince, and that is the biggest shock of the night that she did not cash in at WrestleMania. Yeah. Hey Vito, what ha I thought ba Bailey and Sasha were having a match. They were in the battle royal. But I thought they were having a match, no? No. It was her, it was Bailey and Sasha at the end of the battle royal. And Bailey threw Sasha out, but they forgot that Naomi wasn't it wasn't eliminated. And Naomi eliminated Bailey. So the feud still goes on. Yeah. Vito, you know, here's here's another missed opportunity. Remember, I told you we talked about the Braun Strowman gimmick, where uh, you know so many people could have been the partner, bro. You know what right. I'm saying? Really, a missed opportunity. I, I'm telling you, that would have been a great Hogan spot. That would have been a great Hogan spot, bro. Bro, he and, and bro, bro, how long could they have pulled it off? Where Strowman just killed the guys, and he gives Hogan the tag for the leg drop, the big boot. How long could they have done that for, bro? At least a year. I mean, you know, but forget it. But, bro, this, I thought, was the second biggest missed opportunity. I'll tell you why, Vito. The first entrance was um, uh, Happy Jack. No, not Happy Jack. Uh, 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 Seth Rollins came out first. Very vanilla outfit. I mean, Seth, this is WrestleMania, bro. The black and the gray. Like, what, 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 what was that, bro? Yeah, I mean, the blue eyes, the neon eyes. Yeah, very... Yeah. Eh, very you had the worst outfit of the night bro then bro they come out with the miss Vito, you know what i'm thinking i'm yeah. thinking they're finally gonna get this right they're gonna start this thing by blowing the roof off this place they purposely had us forget about the demon and they're gonna they're, they're, they're having finn come out last because Finn's going to come out as the demon. And then, no, bro, he comes out as Happy Jack, F Fonzarelli, you know, and Seth Rollins. <laughs> bro, I would have put the belt on Finn Balor just to have him come out as the demon. Bro, I'll never understand that demon thing, bro. I'll never understand it. That is money. They could have made so much money off of merch. The, the kids, bro, that, that was such a moneymaker. I'll never understand why we saw it twice and never saw it again. If they were ever going to go to it, bro, this was the time to do it. Open up WrestleMania red hot that way. I got to tell you, I was disappointed in this match. And I'll tell you why. I, was, I thought the Miz should have won. I, I he, he sent the Miz to Raj to the back. The Miz came out. It could have gave him, made him the longest reigning champion since Pedro Morales. I just, I, I don't get why they let him go so far, and then they freaking take it away from him. Well, he's, yeah. he's the hardest working guy in there. He's the most believable. He's best on the mic. His wrestling is good. Is he on the level of Brock Lesnar? No, but not anybody is. Can he hang with Roman Reigns and be in a match and give quality matches? Absolutely. I think he's the best championship material they have, and they, and they took it away from him again. Yeah, I, I just don't, Vito. You know, I don't. I don't disagree with you. I I just think the intercon, bro. The intercon the title, and the, none of the titles mean anything anymore, bro. They don't. None of them. None of them. Really, none of them mean anything anymore, bro. So I I, I hear what you're saying, bro. But I I just I don't think the intercontinental title means anything anymore. Now and then they had they had um, Finn Balor representing the. Uh, the gay community, right? right. They got, they've been having them do that. Now, what's the sense of – now, the gays didn't just happen overnight. These guys have been around a long time. And much respect to them. 
because they do advocate for, you know, for equal rights for everybody in the world. They have a lot of good causes. They do a lot of great things, right? And they're great people. But to have them come out representing the gay community, did they try to get the, the gay fans to look even closer? Or did they try to get another market by doing this? But by doing it, if you're having this community, you know, back one of your wrestlers, shouldn't you have had the guy go over? Yeah. So Steph, Steph, well, Rollins, Seth, Seth Rollins didn't have no backing. The Miz didn't have a backing. But here well, you have somebody representing a community well, and something great. Well, bro, bro, if midget pancakes are going to come out, don't you put the guys over? I just, bro, I don't know, Vince. Don't you put I the have, guys over, bro? Can I be honest with you? Yeah. As soon as I heard, as soon as I heard the new day and everything, I really walked away from the TV. I honestly, and I'm going to tell you what I did. I went and put a face mask on. I was taking care of my face and just doing my stuff. I, I can't watch it. I'm glad the Bludgeon Brothers won because I actually like them. And I think that they they represent what wrestlers look like. And you didn't see, like. you didn't see the midget pancakes? No, I did. I was in the bathroom powdering my nose. I don't give a shit. I did not want to watch it. And I think I think the hell of the Usos. The reason I did not watch it, people, because it was a four way cluster that I didn't want to watch. A three way cluster that I did not want to watch because it was going to be too many hit and runs and hit and misses, and I was going to get aggravated. And I saved myself ten minutes of misery. Yeah. So overall, bro, what do you think? WWE, I think you did a decent job tonight. I thought the matches of the night were um, Charlotte and Oscar and the Stephanie, Triple H, Angle, and Rozzy. Uh, Rozzy? Ronda Rousey. Rozzy. Rozzy. Okay, good. Rozzy. It's the, it's the New York in there. Rozzy. Rozzy. <laughs> no, but um, – you know, overall, it was not a bad pay per view. It was long. It was definitely long. I think if you would have shortened the matches to um, help the wrestlers who can't go that long, I think you would have made them look more impressive. The matches would have came off a lot better, you know. And um, you know, everybody's going to question now: What do you do with Brock Lesnar? Is this his last match? Will Roman Reigns show up and cut a promo tomorrow? Will Brock sign another contract and go on another couple-year run? Because he is legit the king of the yard, the beast, the man. He's no joke. I don't see foresee a Goldberg return. I don't foresee anybody coming out of the woodwork that's well, going to beat him. Let, Lashley's coming in, bro. Okay, Lashley. Lashley hasn't been on TV. That's not a knock on TNA, but he hasn't been on the mainstream in a long time. Yeah, and he hasn't fought MMA in a long time either. So he's been kind of like out of the limelight. So he's going to come in. They have to build him up a little bit to give him some credibility or get his credibility back, let him win a couple of high-profile matches. It's going to take a few months before he gets off to Lesnar, and that's if Lesnar's going to be there. So, I mean, you still well, got – How do we know tomorrow night Lesnar doesn't, you know, I beat the best and blah, 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 blah. How do we know tomorrow night Lesnar doesn't throw out an open invite and Leslie shows up? It could happen. I'm not saying it can't, but if you're looking for, you know, let's let's be legit. Brock weren't, works once a month. He already made his appearances. His contract is up. You know, if he's coming back tomorrow to drop the title, hey, hey, great. You know, but – I just think that it was a it was a decent WrestleMania. I'm not going to bury it. My favorite matches are the ones I said. The other people who did they worked hard. All of you people worked hard tonight. All yeah. of you gave a great effort. Yeah. All of you did good. I have no complaints about anybody tonight. No. So I mean, good job WWE. Congratulations on your WrestleMania. I hope that you have more success next year. And the Undertaker coming back short and sweet was what everybody wanted, and you gave them what they wanted. Then Cena, congratulations on doing business the right way, and you did the job. I'm glad to see it. It was good. Yeah, Vito, I think there were definitely more positives than negatives. I think the biggest negative of the night was they shot themselves in the foot with seven hours of wrestling, bro. 
And, no, and right. bro, after those people blew up for Daniel Bryant, they were yeah. dead. They were dead, bro. For the rest of the night, they were dead. And bro, let me tell you something. Shame on the fans for chanting "This is awful" during Brock Lesnar and Roman. Come, come on. Like Vito says, come on, people. Show a little oh, freaking baby. class. Show guy, some guy, class. Guy, guys are in there, bro. Busting their humps. Come on, man. You know, the fans are the fans and they're fickle. And it's not like the the old days where they used to cheer and used to do stuff. And fans, you know, they're too smart for the business now because it's been exposed. And that's why you don't get the fan reaction and you don't get what you really should get during some of the matches, you know? And I just think that, you know, today with social media, social media has killed the business. And especially the way they expose it and then the change in wording of entertainers instead of professional wrestlers who are larger than life. And that just doesn't exist. So we have to take the good with the bad. So there are still quality wrestlers out there, like the guys who, guys and gals who wrestled tonight on the undercard as well, because I did not watch the undercard. I apologize. But to everybody who participated tonight in WrestleMania, congratulations. It was good. I'm yeah. sure everybody liked it. I and agree. now everybody could say that the big Vito's getting color was all complimentary yeah. about a WWE show. I agree. I agree. Vito, who had the best complexion on the show? <sighs> Honestly, let's see. Um, well, it's kind of hard with the girls because they all have makeup, you know what I mean? So yeah. I can't really – you're talking, you know, and they all are very pretty. Yeah. All, all of them are very good-looking girls. And I guess the best complexion for the guys, I you look at a lot of them. I'd say Roman Reigns. Nice complexion, huh? Yeah. I like the – one of the midget pancakes had a real nice complexion. Vince, you must be hungry. It's getting close to 12 yeah. o'clock. Well, Vito, it is 115 by you, bro. And I thank you for watching the show. I thank you for staying up this late. Plug away, bro. I know you're starting a channel now. You got a psychic on. The, the psychic was making WrestleMania predictions. How did he I do had, it, bro? I had, I had him do the WrestleMania predictions. How did he do? I got to hear how he did now. Go ahead. He did pretty good, I have to say. he had a, He's got a magician in the office. He's got somebody. He got his crystal ball out. He did his thing. And I think for everybody who tunes into the channel, if you're a subscriber and it's important you be a subscriber, we are going to do a, uh, we're going to have the psychic on and we're going to pick a winner and we're going to give you a free psychic reading where we're going to have you guys get in touch. He's going to do a psychic reading for you. It's something that nobody's doing out there. It's an idea I came up with and I think it's going to be fun. The Big Vito brand has grown to, we have seven, eight shows now that we're doing. We're covering real life. We actually have one wrestling show coming up because I thought that was something that we needed. And it's a young man who I was doing something with. His name is Virtue. He's coming on board next week. And we're gonna, he's going to do a recap of wrestling. And I think that with the cooking shows we have, the Super Ugly Wives, the Super Ugly Show, um, the Certified Nick G., uh, spilling the tea with Teen Moms, which are going to be doing a, a reality show. Um, there's a couple of shows in the works. We have what I do on the show. And I just think that it's a great thing. Vince Russo helped me start the brand. And I remember when we started this and he asked me, you want to be, you want to do, uh, do you want to do this? You want to be on, you know, podcast one? And I says, oh, I never really thought about it. So that's when we said, you got to change your name or work. You got to work on your brand. And Val Venus was telling me, work on your brand, have a brand. So, you know, this is what it started out from zero to all this that we have people. And we're about, we're a little less than, uh, we're about 300 people short of, a thousand view a thousand subscriptions so if everybody out there i know we have a lot of downloads and a lot of people respect us if people can go over and subscribe to my uh my youtube channel at the big veto brand i would greatly appreciate it because the more we do the more shows we could produce and the more we could do for everybody then like i said this is the platform for everybody who has a quality show whose dream is to be on the Realm Network. So what are you doing? You're trying out your show here. And if Vince Russo likes the show, he'll either put you on, 
I'll ask you to do a tryout. I'll ask you to do a couple things. And, you know, maybe you can get a spot on Realm Network. Maybe you can be on iTunes. But you got to start out somewhere, people. And everybody thinks you just shoot to the top, and you don't. You start out on the bottom. You work yourself up. We are the AAA. We are the NXT. We are the thing that you where you got to start. So if you got a quality show of 25 minutes or less that has a good content, 20 minutes, I'm sorry, I'm being told from the back, 20 minutes, 20 minutes or less that has good contact, you know, get in touch with us at the Big Vito brand, at bigvito.com. You get to see all of our shows, everything we're doing. Keep up to date with the Big Vito brand. And, you know, I got, again, I got to give my buddy Vince Russo a lot of thanks for having the confidence in me to do this. And from where I started to where I am now as being a uh, analyst, and somebody who is a journalist and somebody who's a broadcaster, I have come leaps and bounds in the way I handle myself, articulate myself, and the way I speak on the network here at the Realm Network. Vince, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. You're welcome, Vito, and thank you for all your contributions. Thank you for staying up till almost 1.30. And everybody, I will be back tomorrow with a bucket full of chicken necks. See you then. Same bad time, same bad channel.